comeback player this past season was Keenan Allen. After tearing the ACL in his right knee, he utterly dominated during his 2017 season, racking up over 1,400 total yards. Allen regularly put on a clinic, making some pretty spectacular plays. After watching and tracking every single one of his targets from this past season, I was damn impressed by what I saw on the field. But before we look at some of those plays, here were the results of his top 7 routes this past season. As you can see, his most effective route by far was the dig route. While he had 22 targets, only 16 were actually catchable, and he made the most of them by gaining almost 300 yards. Beyond dig routes, hitches and out routes made up a large bulk of his route tree. He lined up in the slot for about half of his snaps and was extremely effective using a two-way go to his advantage. By my tracking, one of the most impressive things Allen does are these full body steps and jump cuts in order to create separation. He has an insane amount of hip flexibility in order to make these moves. Some of his cuts are legitimately 90 degrees, which I honestly have no idea how he does it. Watch this play against Miami. Allen is split out left while Miami shows one safety deep. The other safety walks up to the line of scrimmage and Rivers pretty much knows that he's blitzing. The Dolphins are actually in cover one here where the cornerbacks are in man coverage on the receivers. After the snap, Allen takes a slow release outside, then jabs his left foot hard into the ground. If you notice his body weight during this cut, he actually has his hips back and his inside foot pointing parallel to the line of scrimmage. This is the direction where he actually wants to go. At this point in the play, he already has a snap one. The defender has his hips completely turned towards the sideline, which gives Allen a free path back inside. This release is super impressive. What's more impressive is how he catches the ball. This pass is behind him, so Allen has to jump back and contort his body in order to make this grab. Even though this is the case, he still has the quickness after the catch in order to gain more yards. Here's another play where Allen does the same exact thing, but this time it's on an out route. This play was against the Eagles, and they were actually in cover three zone defense. After the snap, Allen takes a stuttered inside release, staying on the balls of his feet. He then jabs his inside foot hard into the ground, extends his arms out for balance, and then flips his hips back outside to get open for this pass. Now, I mentioned the Eagles were in zone coverage, but it's not pure zone across the board. Clearly, based on 3 by one alignment of the offense, and with the running back on the far side as well, the Eagles are actually playing solo or lock coverage on Allen. This means that number 32 is actually in man coverage. This is a subtle difference but it's especially important on this play. Looking back at Allen's release with this in mind, the cornerback obviously thought he was breaking inside on a drag route. If the cornerback was playing standard zone cover three, there's a good chance he would have played this completely differently. He probably would have been a lot more conservative and wouldn't have chased him across the field. But because he's essentially in man coverage here, he has to follow. This adjustment is essentially what bit him in the butt and Allen completely torched him on this play. Beyond his releases, which Allen is comically good at setting up, his relationship and really his trust with Phillip Rivers consistently helped this offense. There was a play in the Dallas Cowboys game that was a prime example of this. Allen is running a corner route and Rivers sees that the defender has outside leverage, so he places the pass on the inside instead of near the sideline. For all intents and purposes, Rivers threw what's called a back shoulder corner route. I rarely see this on tape. The main reason for that is that if these two were not in sync, there's a decent chance that a safety can pick this ball off if he's anywhere near the throw. He's not in this play, but give credit to Allen for turning and locating the ball mid-route in order to make this catch. Now, for as much crap as I give Rivers for bad placement and for simply being off in terms of accuracy, there was a play against the Giants that was downright amazing. The Chargers are running a mesh concept underneath while they run a post-out route down the sideline. On the defensive side, the Giants are running a fire zone blitz while playing a single high safety up top. Rivers knows that based on their alignment, some wonky shit is about to happen. He keeps his eyes downfield and he sees that a linebacker is dropping with inside leverage on the receivers. He also sees the cornerback with outside leverage on both these routes so he doesn't have a huge window for this throw. Rivers doesn't even fully step up and his pass came out like a bullet low and in a perfect place for his receiver. It's just past the trailing linebacker, and if he put this in any bit in front of Allen, this ball might have been intercepted. By my tracking, Rivers wasn't always the best at hitting Allen's stride this season, but this throw was an absolute dime. As I mentioned earlier in this video, Allen was the king of dig routes for this offense. 
He consistently won versus man and zone coverage, showing the hip flexibility to sink and burst out of his rounds. He's a natural attacking defense between their zones, and he's very aware of the situation. He knows how to adjust his routes based on down and distance, and he consistently fought to gain more yards. Throughout the season, the Chargers did a great job of using him in motions or in stacked releases or simply in bunches for him to get an easy release down the field. On this play versus the Eagles, he used that to his advantage and cut apart this cover three defense. Now, what I find hilarious and honestly kind of messed up at the same time is what Jalen Mills did here on this play. He completely gets lost and knocks the hell out of the wrong receiver. That's a big reason why this play went for 50 yards instead of 25 or 30. Moving on, there was one route that I thought Allen did an incredible job of, but he rarely ran it for this offense. That route, which ironically is a theme of this video, was the comeback. Allen is incredible at pressing vertically to create separation, and he does that like a champion on this play. After the snap, Allen starts his release running about 90%, and once he's within arm length of the cornerback, he leans into the route and vertically pushes him at the sideline. At this point in the play, number 32 is in a no-win situation. Allen did such a good job of selling the go portion of this comeback route, and that allowed him to drop his hips to the ground in order to create separation. If this pass was just a little bit more on target, this should have been a first down. So, as everybody knows this by now, I'm pretty critical when I look at players. I firmly believe that not a single player is perfect. But honestly, there isn't a ton to criticize about Allen. He'll sometimes take extended releases where he'll get a bit too fancy with his footwork, other times he'll initiate contact versus zone coverage instead of simply finding a gap, and he's not a physically dominant receiver to win in the end zone based on his height and weight. But beyond this though, there isn't much else. The main things that you do have to call him out on are for drops and for injuries. He's averaged a drop on roughly 7% of his catchable passes, which isn't the best. Also in terms of injuries, he's only played in something like 66% of his games. For as much as I love his game and really everything he brings to the field, you can't ignore that. Simply put, the injuries are the single biggest reason I can't put Allen in my top 10. I will say this though, if this is Madden and you can turn off injuries, he's a guy that I want on all my teams. Before ending this breakdown, and for all my fantasy football followers out there, be happy to take Allen in the second round next year. If I'm in a 12-man league, I would strongly consider taking him in 12 or 13 overall. The dude is simply incredible and healthy. I just make sure you draft a good backup and the decent chance you'll miss some games. Well, that's all I have for you in this breakdown. As I mentioned in my previous video or if you've been following me on Twitter, I've officially started writing for The Athletic. I could not be more happy with the website and the other writers on staff. Even if you aren't a Seahawks fan, they are building up their other team sites and will soon be covering every NFL team with all of your favorite writers. They are still offering some pretty amazing discounts to sign up so go ahead and follow the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching this video, and as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel or Gold.